Today I'm going to talk about the, uh, this project that I have been working on for about the last half year. So if you want to know more about the Ultra Pet, as I call it, um, stay tuned and let's have some 8-bit time. As you know, I have built uh, these kind of boards, um, the uh, MicroPet, which is a Commodore PET clone on uh, a single uh, Euro PCB. Uh, but I've also built uh, Commodore PET clones based on uh, these kinds of backplanes um, and uh, with own CPU cards and this I.O. card that is doing all the PET I.O. So now I have decided to um, create this CPU board for uh, the old uh, Commodore uh, PET clone with the bus system using the MicroPET technology. As you can see here, there's the CPLD, there is the CPU, the I.O. is gone. It has to come from the PET I.O. board of the existing PET clone. And there is some little surprise here that I'll talk about in a minute. This is the, this is the bus interface. And so let's see how this uh, looks like. So this is an ultra pet in the most basic form. Uh, you have the CPU card, for which I call the ultra CPU card. Um, and, uh, I'm calling it this way because uh, as there is no pet specific I.O. On, on that, it could also be used uh, with some other programming for uh, to emulate other types of 6502 computers. Um, but this still has to be implemented. And there is the PET I.O. board. Um, I have the keyboard attached to it and I have my uh, Nano 488 uh, disk drive emulator uh, attached to it as well. So how does it boot? And unfortunately you can't really see much because of that uh, crappy camera because I'm using a dual camera setup. But I hope you can see it and probably put in a uh, photo instead um yeah this one has color this one has color so the um the added secretary uh that i put in here is doing the uh, color conversion and color color generation for uh, the vga output and it's using rgbi uh, color uh, generation and I've been working together with uh, Steve Gray on uh, the CBM editor uh, project and uh, you can see here the, uh, the color graphics that I put on onto this board is actually uh, ColorPad compatible. So um, you can run uh, Steve Gray's ColorPad ROMs, editor ROMs here and uh, really um, have some some color fun. You may have noticed that I um, have been working on this project for half a year and uh, this still is basically version 1.0 of uh, the board and the reason uh, why this is still version 1.0 and it's basically only very few things that needed fixing is because of the development process I'm, I'm doing. So let me know in the comments if you uh, want to know more about how I uh, do the development of my, my boards uh, so that I have a number of rather complex boards that actually worked in version 1.0 and then I just only just added some feature in 1.1, 1.2 and so on. So. Um, let me know. And um, one one interesting thing here is uh, this is of course uh, programming on the CPLD. So you have that large programmable uh, chip here that you can program with the uh, this uh, programmer here. And um, of course there uh, there are some bugs in there, and the, the, this doesn't work out of the box from the beginning. 
So uh, let me show you something, um, how I fixed the, the, the latest bug. So here's my test setup. Uh, you can see the UltraPad uh, with the CPU board and we have the PET IO board here uh, with the keyboard attached and the Nano 488 uh, as disk drive for it. There's the power supply and two signal lines to the oscilloscope. Uh, let me show that over here, which is running and uh, the uh, yellow signal is the actual clock signal, uh, the CPU clock. As you can see, there is very small, um, small phase one um, phases uh, of the clock uh, that are timed such that it's basically running at one megahertz. Um, the reason is that those will be always the phase one clocks for the CPU, but the um, phase two clock is stretched, so you get uh, different uh, types of uh, of speed that the system can run on one, two, four, or twelve and a half megahertz. The lower line here is the um, I/O select line, and uh, the reason why I'm showing this is because. I previously had a different programming in the CPLD um, and that caused um, that, that the, base, the, the speed of the CPU basically doubled when it was accessing the I.O. memory because it had uh, two accesses uh, in, in very short succession um, because of the way I did the timing. So, uh, I noticed this when I did the uh, the test run. So let me show you uh, some of it. So if you go to the to the boot screen, you can see here with the, with the nice colors now, uh, and then we boot into the UltraPad uh, boot menu. Uh, where is it? And then we run the burn in test. And then you can see it's running at uh, basically one megahertz now um, because I fixed it. Um, you can see that uh, for every one megahertz, really, um, the, the, the one megahertz is always, is also kept when it's accessing the IO. And that, uh, you would have seen that in the uh, case of the timer um, because those tests here they would have shown errors uh, in the one megahertz uh, when uh, uh, before I did that change also um, and that is a good thing here uh, this change removed some other code that I needed to uh, for um, that I had in there to uh, slow the CPU down to these uh, speed grades. Um, so there was enough space now to put back in the 8296 emulation. So good thing here. The trigger to actually um, do this video now was that uh, just recently uh, a specific program has been uh, published uh, which is running on uh, the color pad. And I may be one of the very few people that actually have something that is a color pad or color pad compatible. So uh, let me show you. So let's load the game and start it. And I, ah, my bad. It runs in 40, uh, 40 column mode, of course. So let's switch to 40 column mode. Load the game again. There's one thing here. Um, the uh, 40 column mode is uh, um, it has the color capability, but the ROM, the editor ROM, 
I Steve Gray is not yet uh, uh, fully there. So this is uh, giving the uh, login screen of the uh, color version, but uh, without the color. So, but the game has it. So, because I don't have a joystick, I use the numeric keys and A is the attack key. So let's see how it works. Oh, bummer. Uh. So, as you can see, this is uh, not an easy game and I'm not the best one playing it. So, that's it for today. Um, thanks for watching and see you next time.